Shalom, brothers and sisters and family. Shalom. Welcome to the live Shabbat class. This is your host, Jeremiah Israel, and welcome to another Sabbath day. Before I get started, for those who are new to this channel, or those who are return visitors, if you have not also have not uh, hit the like and subscribe button already, please do so at this moment. It doesn't cost a thing. And if you are planning on returning to get understanding of the Word of God according to His scriptures, according to the scriptures of the Bible, feel free to, uh, to hit the like and subscribe button. This is a teaching ministry, and I teach the Word of the Most High God, not, not according to uh, a camp philosophy or according to any camp doctrine. I'm not, a, I'm not associated with a camp. But I've learned from these brothers, so I, like I'm saying, I'm not disrespecting them at all. I, I, I learned from them, you know, uh, they're a great, great body of people to learn from. They, they do sit in Moses' seat. You know, if you, if you want to get understanding of, 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 of the milk, feel free to, you know, th you know they, they do provide uh, the milk so that you can get understanding, so that the door can be open to you for understanding the word of the Most High God. Uh, if you like to support this network, you can go on to Amazon.com. I have I've written books in two different under two different names. First, under my given name, this is the Prophet of Israel. And if you are trying to learn anything about about the Most High God, I will suggest you get this book. Of the covenant of the Most High God, the first covenant. Also, I wrote, wrote books in Jeremiah Israel. You can go onto Amazon.com, put both either both of these names, either this name here, Jeremiah Israel, into the uh, search uh, search line, and it will pull up all the books that I've written under that under that name. Uh, this is my latest. This is the hardback. And this is the paperback. Sorry, they don't look the same, but they're the same book, got the same content in them. Jeremiah Israel, Israelite Reconstruction. If you want to get this book made available at the library, you would need three three uh, three types of information from this from this uh, from the author. You need the author's name, the uh, the title, and this ISBN number. And when you go to Amazon.com and you do a search on this here, Jeremiah Israel, you put a search in the search line, Jeremiah Israel, hit enter, and all the books that, that are in my name will come up. And the book that you are interested in, if it's this book here, click on that book, and there will be a, a thing that will show you all the information that you need to get, have available to, to go to the library and say, can you make this book available in the library? And, and most of the time, they will purchase the book, and then they will c contact you when the book is available. My goal is to, you know, get this information to, to all of our people's minds so that they can understand their God, so that we can get out of this, get out, get out of this captivity. You know, nothing is going to work until you return to your God. You know. Nation of Islam ain't gonna work. Uh, Black Panther Party is not gonna work. Pan Africanism is not gonna work. Try the Most High God. Try doing things His way, according to His Word, not according to some doctrine, not according you got to say His name and all this other stuff. Not according to that. You know, because if you, if you know if you men are thinking like men who have kids I don't want my kids saying my name and not doing nothing I want to, I tell them to do that's foolish your kid out there oh yeah yeah you know yeah Joseph 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 oh yeah Joseph Joseph you just say my name all day long and I tell them to do simple stuff and they don't do it that ain't gonna make me happy they're gonna piss me the hell off what do you think that's, that does to the most I got? Well, you got to say his name. It's Yahweh. In Christ, Yahweh Shai. Oh, okay. 
Oop. Sound like lizard people. I have books also. Uh, Holy the Holy Spirit teaches. Uh, I was writing books this size at first, but you know what? I I, I learned that Hebrews don't like to read. This book is probably 500 and some pages long. Yep, 507 pages long. Hebrews don't like reading, so I, I kind of cut them down a little smaller. I try to write them now between uh, 150 to 250 pages so that people will actually read them. I would suggest the, the prophet of Israel, if you're, try, if you're new into the truth, get this book and learn who your God is. You know, it's not going to take, your God is this, but it will give you an understanding of how the Most High God used the prophets, what he used them for, and what were the people sinning about. And then when you when you come to the day's standards and you understand that, oh, would this be a sin? Would this be something that Most High God would send his prophets for? And you ask, you ask yourself that question. Most of the time, the Most High God sent his prophets for idolatry. Yeah, and, and, and committing adultery against him. Worshiping of other gods. And, and being mean to each other. Killing your own brothers and sisters like we're doing today. Yes, he will send prophets. That's why people are out here now telling y'all that you're going the wrong way. So, when you start thinking about the things that the Most High God would send prophets to for, the things that we're doing, idolatry, or that Baphomet, yeah, he's going to send prophets for that. Because all, all you guys who want to get hooked up in hip-hop and all that stuff, oh, y'all got to worship that, uh, that Baphomet and being mean to each other, killing and stealing and robbing. For the Lord has a controversy with, with the nation of Israel, but there's no there's no peace, you know, in your community. There's no peace in there. Drive-by shootings and murdering each other. Anyway, I've rambled off long enough, so let's let's get started with our lesson. Shalom, Israel. This includes you so-called blacks. Hispanics and Native Americans, those of the diaspora dispersed throughout the Americas, Africa, India, Europe, Asia, and the islands, those of the sub-Saharan and the transatlantic slave trade. My topic today is biblical events. Women of Israel, and we we deal, we going we dealing with Esther. We dealing with Esther today. There were some great daughters and mothers in Israel who sometimes rose to the occasion of greatness on behalf of their nation, Israel. Esther happens to be one of them, one of these, one of those women who fought on behalf of her nation. The best way that she knew how. Esther and her uncle Mordecai were subjects under the Persian and Medes, and King Ahasuerus, or Xerxes. You know, a lot of these people have several names. When you when you see Ahasuerus and you see uh, in uh, Daniel Xerxes, you're talking about the same person. Ahasuerus, Xerxes, they, they're basically the same person. The dilemma how Esther became queen. What, what would have happened to place a woman whose people were in captivity, placing her in the, in the one of the top spots within the kingdom? What would you have to do? She already in captivity, but what you think would have to happen to put this woman in the top spot in the kingdom, a slave 
or or a women a woman of the captivity. Just like today, you are the captivity, and all of a sudden you are placed in the top spot in the kingdom. Esther 1 and 9. Also, Vasti, the queen, made a feast for the women in the royal house, which belonged to King Ahasuerus. Vasti was the current queen, and at the same time, when the king had a seven-day feast, she had a feast for the women in the royal house of King Ahasuerus. Esther 1 and 10. On the seventh day, when the heart of the king was married with wine, he commanded Mahuma, Bistha, Harbona, Bigtha, and Abagatha, Zertar, and Kalkaz, the seven chamberlains that served in the presence of Ahasuerus the king. When the king had a few glasses of wine, he spoke to his chamberlains, a bedroom attendants, Esther 1 and 11, to bring Vasti, the queen, before the king with the crown royal to show the people and the prince her beauty, for she was fair to look on. Okay, he wanted them to go, oh, go, get, go get Vasti, show, to, show, her, show, her, you know, show off to everybody. This is my queen. Let's see what Vasti did. Esther 1 and 12. But the queen Vasti refused to come at the king's commandment by his chamberlains. Therefore was the king very wroth, and his anger burned in him. What? Now she's in my house eating, playing, throwing parties and stuff, and I just do a simple request for her to come, you know, for, for her to come see me. And she, I'm, I'm not going. I'm not going. You tell the king I ain't coming. Oh, okay. However, Queen Vasa decided that she did not want to come. She refused the king's request. She was acting like a modern woman, throwing a, throwing a party in the king's house and did not feel that she needed to honor simple requests. In this modern era, many of you may think there is nothing wrong with her decision. Let us see how Ahasuerus and his advisors handled it. Because the fact is, that was everything wrong. You and a man's, and see, that, that is a problem with a lot of you women who think have a modern, modernized uh, ideology. That's the problem with you. You, you want a man making all kinds of money, but he tell you, hey, babe, you know, this this house, why don't you clean up some? And you think that request is too much and you ain't working, you ain't doing nothing, but he can't even get you to make him a meal. And then you get upset when he just drop you off and say, you know what, you out of here. Well, you know, like I'm saying, I can find another you. And we're going to find out because the thing about it is, yes, Vasti was a beautiful woman. But she thought she was so pretty that he would never be able to find another one. Let's see what happened. Esther 1 and 15. What shall we do unto the Queen Vasti according to law? Because she had not performed the commandments of the king, Ahasuerus, by the chamberlains. Did they turn into simple men and accept the queen's request? Something had to be done about this disrespectful attitude of the queen. She showed no respect even for the king who made a simple request. Perhaps Queen Vasti was a modern woman living in the wrong era. The heathens were searching out their laws to determine if there was something that they could do to the queen. This is a great example of a man having the wrong woman 
at his side who is full of disrespect and contempt for him, embarrassing him before his peers and friends. Now, you you hood woman and you hood got that that hood attitude that you walk you you think that you deserve a man of statue, a man of the community, a man that's doing business and you walk your butt up in there with a BBL tattooed up and your butt all out and stuff and he and, and he's trying to conduct million dollar business and here you come. He gonna lose contracts and everything, jobs, proposals, everything he gonna lose because of your of your trifling ass. I'm gonna say it like that. And then you understand? Then you talking about you attend? No, the men of, of business, the men that's doing things, it's not gonna look for a woman like you. So all y'all out there that doing all this old crazy stuff, getting tattoos, sleeves all up your arm and down your leg. No, no man that's that's worth his worth on his purpose, it's not looking for that. Now you, a, a few men may may be because you know they may be. A, a, Pro players, you know, football players, and they may be tatted all up and stuff like that. But men in business don't look for that. They ain't looking for no woman that, you know, got all that. If you want, if you want to be in shape, go to the gym and, and do like everybody else do. You go to get a BBL and and all that, and, and, and you know, no BBLs, especially you know when they get these butt a uh, butt job, that make you look so unnatural, make a woman look so unnatural. You know, nobody's butt should be that damn big. I'm sitting up there like, that's really unnatural. <laughs> oh, and, and see, you know, society dealt with this. Quick, the, the king turned to his advisors, asked questions. What are we going to do about this? Vasti, what are we going to do about this? Ecclesiasticus 26 and 26. A woman that honored her husband shall be judged wise of all. But she that dishonored him in her pride shall be counted ungodly of all. Vasti showed dishonor to King Ahasuerus before his kingdom. Because, you know, he had all the press. He had, you know, everybody that was before the king. There were no common folk before the king at this time. He had people that ran the kingdom. Oh, he can't run his own house. He told his wife to come, and she she just straight up said, I'm not coming. Wow. Oh, he's going to weep. That made, that made him look bad. So, so the king took, he, like I said, the kingdom took care of that stupidity. What is our kingdom doing? They encouraging all of this foolishness right now today. This it, like a thing, you know what? We when 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 mankind act out of order for no reason at all, there's a reason. You just don't know it. There are beautiful women all over the world, outnumbering the men. In some locations, ten to one. However, there are a small percentage of successful men who are six feet tall, muscular, make over six figures a year, has his own house, car, cars, and is godly. That 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 combination there, you're not gonna hardly find. Because even the ones that claim to be godly are not godly. So when, when, you, when, you, when a man that that's making the six feet tall, that's godly, that's making over six figures a year, and has his own property, house, cars, and and and, and all of that stuff, there are very few men of that statue. Because you know what? When you start factoring in the ones that are gay and, and all of the other stuff, it's a very few. It's, it's, it's less than 1%. Because, you know, there are you know, very few men. Like I'm saying, the population of men, the, the average height of, of man, mankind is 5 foot 8, 5 foot 9. 
That's the average height of, of mankind. But every woman want a man over six foot. That making a hundred k or more, or, or, or more like you're living in you living in uh, uh, on the, each one of the coasts of New York or L.A. A hundred k ain't nothing. You you still poor. So we're talking about at least 300,000 on on those two ends there. But in you know in Dallas and in Houston and stuff, hundred k be okay. In Atlanta, Dallas, Houston, Atlanta. Those areas, yeah, you be all right. But you go to the East Coast, $100,000 ain't nothing. You're going to need a roommate. Proverbs 625. Lust not after her beauty in thine heart, neither let her take thee with her eyelids. Don't lust after a woman in your mind. Don't lust after a woman in your mind. You men, stop lusting after these women because they ain't nothing but traps. A lot of them are nothing but traps. Especially when you got a lot to lose. Matter of fact, first you need to understand you. What's your purpose in all of these things? And stop lusting after these women in, in your mind. Yeah, they, they, you know, the fact is, because all of these women, are uh, most of these women that you, you run around in in these circles, they don't look like that for real. Because once they take all of that mess off their face and take that fake hair off and, and all of that stuff, take that that push-up bra off and, and all of that crap, take that uh, girdle off their belly and all that, you, you're going to get the real them. That's not the, that's not the real them. They they be in there they be in there perpetrating fraud, you know. With all like the, you meet a woman, you make sure you meet her first time with no makeup on. If she if a woman come with a bunch of makeup, you just leave her there. You know, night have a nice day. Cause I don't know what you're trying to hide, but you know what? Cause you know what? Think about think about you know they call us a bunch of liars, but women lie a lot about you know about their beauty. Because they got all kinds of things to make them to, to make them look good. You know, men, we don't we don't wear makeup and wear weaves. Yeah, but well, let me stop that because there are some products out there. They got they got weeds and wigs that they paint on men's head, men's head. I'm like, wow. Let me shut about that. All right, y'all forgive me for that because there there are some men products. I've seen men get they get them ball spots up. Uh, they put some glue or something on and put some a, a wig on and then cut it and stuff and make it look like a real afro. A horse woman whose only value is beauty, you are nothing but a trick to her. She capitalizes on her beauty because many men live foolishly and do not understand righteousness. When selecting a mate, they are living carnally, lustfully, and they suffer the consequences when doing so. A lot of you guys, that's what happened. You suffer. Let's, let's continue on. Esther 1 and, 4, 1 and 16. And Mamukun answered before the king and the prince. Vasti, the queen, had not done wrong to the king only, but also to all the prince to all the people that are in all the provinces of the king Ahasuerus. And King Ahasuerus had like 127 provinces. He said she violated every man in every province. Not only did she did, did wrong to the king, she violated the prince and every man in every province. Wow, he took that that far. The king's advisor, Mamukin, told him that Queen Vasi had not just wronged him, but she wronged all the prince and all the people of the 127 provinces that he ruled over. Her attitude was detrimental to all of his constituents because she felt that she did not have to do the commandments of the king. What if the king makes a decree and all the people ignored his decree? What is the attitude of many modern women today? who think that they can live with successful men in his house, who pays all the bills, 
protects and provides for her, but she has a problem submitting to him seeking 50-50 partnership. She still wants to go to the club and hang out with her male friends and single female whorish friends. This was the attitude of Queen Vasti. He placed the crown on her head because of her beauty, and she thought her beauty gave her power over the king. Now, he gave her that, that position. She didn't come as Queen Vasti. He, you know, this in this era, King Ahasuerus put that crown as queen over her head. Esther 1 and 17. For the deed of the queen shall come abroad unto all women, so that they shall despise their husbands in their eyes. When it shall be reported, this king Ahasuerus, the king Ahasuerus, commanded Vasti, the queen, to be brought in before him, but she came not. What am I reading? Wow. There's nothing new under the sun. To put this type of disobedience away out of the kingdom so that other women in the kingdom would not despise their husbands, a major correction needed to be done. The modern women today are acting out of order. They despise their husbands for no reason, and they conjure up the worst relationships in the past, claiming all relationships in the past were abu abusive. Also, nobody is correcting the behavior of these modern women. Many of them want you to give them money just to talk to them. Righteous, me Righteous men should not consider a woman who dresses out of order, Ecclesiastes 26 and 25. Shame phase woman should be counted as a dog. That would, that's what Ecclesiastes 26 and 25. A shame phase, a shame, a shameless woman. A woman without shame should be counted as a dog. Because you know what? A lot of y'all that put on these outfits and stuff, the clothes that y'all put on, that that your butt is already out when you when you put it on. You a number the dog. What's the name for a female dog? Now, when somebody call you a bitch, don't get upset because that's all you are. You're shameless and you're a dog. And that's what you want to be called, and that's what you want to be. It's gonna have a it's gonna have a bad ending for you. Because in in in, in, in all in, in 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 the real world, not too many people respect those type of women. Oh, they, you know, like I said, yeah, they spit game at you trying to get, you know, you know, get what you got. But as far as respect for you, no. Do not ever consider a horse woman who has nothing to offer but sex. There's, there's an old saying, show me a beautiful woman and I will show you a man who is tired of dealing with her. What can she offer when the sex plays out? She gets older, and she is not as attractive as she was in her th in her youth. You get, you got look you got to take it like that. Men, when you meet women, you're not gonna you, you like I said the, the sex game gonna play out. So, if that woman it cannot doesn't have anything in her head while you while you enjoying sex. When when that game is over and then you see the real her, you 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 hopefully you're not in it too deep where you can get up and walk away. But most of y'all y'all gonna have two three kids and be too late. You should be you shouldn't have been playing in the field in the first place. Esther one and eighteen. Likewise, shall the ladies of Persia and Media say this day unto all the king's prince, which have heard of the deed of the queen, thus shall there arise too much contempt and wrath. The wise men of Persia and Media saw the impact of what Vasti did, and they were re revealing it to the king. If the queen is disrespectful to the king, then what chance does the prince and other people have with their women? Esther 1 and 19. If it pleases the king, let that go 
a royal commandment from him, and let it be written among the law of the Persian and the Medes, that it be not altered, that Vashti come no more before King Ahasuerus, and let the king give her royal estate unto another that is better than she. Let us fire her. Queen Vashti's punishment must be harsh and felt throughout the kingdom to prevent other women in the kingdom from behaving in such a manner. Beautiful women are everywhere. No woman can monopolize beauty. What many modern women should understand that a high statue man can always find a beautiful woman and replace you and replace her. Because she's not the only beautiful woman out there. You know, every every 60 seconds, there's a, there's a, a young lady turning 18. That's a legal law. And regardless of what all you women think, a, a, a woman at 18 is legal. Woman at 19, you know what? When a big, the thing about it is, I'm gonna say it on, on this pod at this pod too. Women don't. The most beautiful women at 18 and 19 don't have to do anything. They get invited to come out on on, on a on a guy a guy that 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 worked all his life, worked hard, that owns a yacht. And when he invites women out, they all young and beautiful women in bikinis, laying on the on the uh, bed, laying out there on the yacht. They don't own no yacht, but the old men do. 35, 45, 55. They the ones on the yacht. So they can always go out and get a, a, a beautiful woman. And and I guarantee you. They're not saying no to this this old man or not or nothing because they know he got got money. Esther one and twenty one, and and this saying and the saying pleased the king, and the prince and the king did according to the word of Mamukin. The king ordered the crown and her royal estate be removed from her. And, and be given to another more beautiful than her. Vasti let her beauty go to her head, thinking that she could disrespect the king as she as she disrespected other men. I'm not going. The most powerful man in the nation don't call you, and you're going to tell him, I'm not coming, and disrespect him in front of all of his guests. And the only thing you have to do is sit there and look beautiful. That was her job. That was that was her job to sit there and look beautiful. That was it. Esther one twenty two. For he sent letters into all the king's prophets, into every prophet according to the writing thereof, unto every people after their language, that every man should bear rule in his own house and that it should be published according to the language of every people. Every man should rule his own house. Even the heathens knew this. First Corinthians 11 and 3. But I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ, and the head of the woman is the man, and the head of Christ is God. Godly men understand the hierarchy, and they do not count the beauty of a whore's woman, making her his wife. If she does not have virtue, then why would you want the embarrassment? When you go out with her, men are snickering behind your back because she was involved in the threesome and orgies before she met you. Why would you want to deal with all of that stupidity just because she looked good? Y'all foolish. Huh? You know, like I said, I, you know the thing about it is you you know as a man you got a lot of, lot of things to stress over already. You don't need to be stressing over the, the person you with because she's behave she's behaved badly because you know the thing about it is most women worry about your future and most men worry about a woman's past. 
You know, you know, a man should want to know what a woman was before he met her. How many bodies she got? How many men she don't slept with? You know, because you know what? You, you, you any any righteous man, righteous Hebrew, you should not even want a woman that slept with over a hundred men, hundred with a, uh, over a hundred men. You should not even want her. I I, I wouldn't. She, she, you know, matter of fact, she disqualified from 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 that from that uh. From that breath, you know, you don't open your legs to everybody in the doggone community. Why would I want? Why would I want that? That's like, you know, that's like a dump. Everybody just dump off in you, and you just, mm -mm. Deuteronomy twenty three seventeen. There shall be no whore of the daughters of Israel, nor a sodomite of the sons of Israel. Most like God don't want neither one. He don't want whores in, in, in this, uh, among, among us, nor do he want sodomites among us. So, y'all with all this other same-sex propaganda, most High God don't want that among us. And the community that I I, I, I plan to build, if the Most High God bless me in, in, in a proper manner, it's not going to have one sodomite. I find your sodomite, you're gone. Or, or a whore. He's not gonna have one whore. You're not gonna be dressed walking up down the street with your butt out. You're not gonna be walking up and down the street, you know, just looking whores. You're not gonna, and, and, you know, it's not gonna be looks. It's gonna be acting. You're not gonna be a whore among 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 the congregation. Sleeping with three, four men amongst amongst us. That's not gonna work. The most high God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob does not want whores, women, and sodomite men among the Israelites. If you are a godly man, then you should want what the most high God wants. True that. You should want what he wants. Esther, let's pick up here. Mm. We're going to pick up here because uh, you know you got to have a place to stop. You know, you got to have somewhere to stop. Gotta have somewhere to stop. So I'm gonna stop here for now and we'll pick up that Esther is selected as the new queen. You know, the thing about it is, this, this was a very good lesson to let you women who, who, who think that you're beautiful, don't let that go to your head because. You may think you are beautiful, but fact is, men about purpose, they will they they will look at you and say, you know what, she a headache to deal with. And they'll pick somebody that's not as beautiful as you, but they have all the attributes that, that he's looking for. That that complement what he does. Don't let beauty go to your calling. The fact is, there are, there are twice as many beautiful women as there are men that fit the qualifications that you want. Y'all talking about y'all settling? No, you're not settling. Because the fact is, one man of the caliber that you're looking for, that's why most of them don't act right. Because they don't have to. They ain't got to marry you. Because... 
they probably have 25 women looking to looking to uh marry them. And, you know, the fact is, you know, just because you're beautiful, there's a lot of beautiful women. And, and with uh with all of these day naps and stuff like that, shoot, you you know, beautiful women would be easy to get, much easier to get, you know, all over the country, all over the world. They don't have to take a a, a bad mouth beautiful woman of America. You know, a lot of a lot of men are, are getting their passports and leaving the country, finding wives elsewhere because they've had enough of y'all. And y'all don't know that. You know, they've done statistics. They say in the next 15 years, over 50 some percent of women are going to be single, childless. And the price of dog food, dog food and cat food going to be up to the sky, up, up in the sky. Because that's where y'all going to be at. Y'all y'all preparing your bed right now and these and these younger women are, are even worse. You know they get out. They get they get them a, 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 a OnlyFans page, and 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 they take it to the streets. They think every man that they talk to that talk to them is supposed to pay them for that conversation. I don't even know where they get that from. You know, some you you simple men have done the worst job in the world, paying women women just to talk to them. Wow. Being foolish, paying women to talk to him and wank out. Wow. Shaking of the head. Anyway. And the thing that Kevin Samuel was doing was too much. He was te treating men. Even, you know, that's not going to work. Even even though that wouldn't have worked. But he, his, his uh, heart was right. He was te trying to teach men to be men. To stand up, to be on their grind, be on their purpose, to do to, to do things worthy of finding a good woman, and know what a good woman is. But first, you got to work on yourself, and that was that wasn't a bad thing. But anyway, I'm gonna get off get off right now, and I'll start the second part of this uh, lesson shortly. With that family and friends, I like to say shalom. shalom.